Let us make a simple scheme of Latin tonsil that will help us to understand the real slide a little bit better. So the surface of Peloton tonsil is covered by epithelium. The mucosa doesn't have a smooth surface, but it forms uh, invaginating crypts instead. Sometimes you can find the bottoms of these crypts also on cross sections. Like here, where you really don't see the connection to the surface, but there is in the three-dimensional space. Uh, the epithelium is the same as in the in the uh, pharynx, so it's a stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. However, in some regions, especially in the crypts, there are gaps between the epithelial cells because the immune cells, the lymphocytes, are penetrating from the lamina propria into the epithelium. So, so you can actually find the lymphocytes inside the epithelium. So if this is the epithelium, it's stratified, squamous, non keratinized We have these crypts. The crypts are uh, filled with uh, uh, remnants of epithelium that means epi dead epithelial cells there are, there's bacteria the food remnants so that's here a material inside the crypts it's kind of a detritus here um, here are the lymphocytes entering lymphocytes entering the epithelium and below the epithelium there is the lamina propria made of loose collagenous connective tissue, mostly reticular connective tissue, but you can find uh, accumulations of lymphocytes here, so-called lymphoid follicles. These follicles have a mantle zone and those do, that are activated and the immune response is occurring right now they have a more pale germinal center. On the bottom there is a fibrous capsule but it covers only the bottom part that is uh, adjacent to the to the uh, pharyngeal wall, so it's called fibrous hemicapsule. Outside the palatine tonsil, you can find some skeletal muscle fibers. Usually, they belong to the uh, to the palatopharyngeal or palatoglossal um, muscles. that are surrounding the tonsillar fossa, which is the anatomical space where you can find the plantain tonsil. And as part of the soft palate, there are also mucous glands.
present. So I'm including a couple of mucous tubules with their compressed nuclei and cytoplasm filled with, uh, mu with the pale mucus. So let's label the slide. Uh, here's the lamina propria of the mucosa. That's loose or reticular connective tissue. Should, so I should actually include also blood vessels here. Then you have these lymphoid follicles everywhere. Many of these have the germinal centers. And there could be these cross sections through the crypts. They could be easily identified because they have the same epithelium as is on the surface. So they got the stratified squamous coordinated epithelium. So this would be the cross section through a crypt. And there is the fibrous hemicapsule with mostly fibro sides and fibroblasts. And these uh, are already the structures occurring in the surrounding tissues, so that's the skeletal muscle fibers, skeletal muscle fibers, and a mucus minor salivary glands. Pelotine tonsils are part of the so-called MALT, which stands for Mucosa Associated Lymphoid Tissue. Let's have another example of MALT uh, from the from the intestine. Let us say from the distal ileum where you have the villi, intestinal villi, and crypts. Yeah, with a simple columnar epithelium. We got the lamina propria of the mucosa. That's a loose connective tissue with blood and lymph vessels. And we got the lamina muscularis of the mucosa. But sometimes the lamina muscularis is not continuous because there are the lymphoid follicles here. Some of them are solitary accumulations of lymphocytes and some of them could be even aggregated so they form larger aggregates that do not respect the border between mucosa and submucosa. This would be 
the epithelium, this will be the lamina propria. This will be the lamina muscularis. All this forms a layer called mucosa. And here there will be submucosa. Connective tissue. But we got these lymphoid follicles. That could be solitary, such as this one, or aggregated, such as this one. A huge field filled with lymphoid follicles. And the aggregated lymphoid follicles are also known as the pyres patches. And this would be an example from the uh, ileum. Okay, here you have the villi, uh, the villi of the mucosa. Here are the uh, intestinal crypts. Let's have a more close look on this region of epithelium beneath the lymphoid follicles. There's a part from the. Uh, enterocytes we already know and apart from the goblet cells that we already also know we got some special cells there called M cells or microfold cells There is a basal membrane here, but in the region of the M cells, it's discontinuous. So we got the uh, enterocytes, the simple columnar epithelium, we got the goblet cells as the mucus producing cell and we got these microfold cells M cell or microfold uh, the microfold cells have this uh, intracellular pocket There is a discontinuous basal membrane. So the immune cells that are here in the lamina propria, such as uh, dendritic cells, which are antigen pre presenting cells, or the lymphocytes. They can come into the pocket and make only a small scheme of these cells here. And the M cells are surrounding the antigens in, in the lumen of the gut. And normally, we know that uh, large molecules do not pass this barrier because we got uh, cell junctions here that prevent uh, transport of large and uh, large molecules. But these microfold cells are taking the antigens in and by a process called transcytosis. They are offering the antigens to the immune cells. 
And once they will be activated, so these are dendritic cells, this will be T helper lymphocytes, they can stimulate the B lymphocytes. To become plasma cells with the rough endoplasmic reticulum that produces the immunoglobulins so activate B lymphocytes and the immunoglobulins uh, are released on the surface of the mucosa. Uh, it's mainly type A immunoglobulins uh, which are stable also on the mucosa. They are stabilized by a secretion component, a glycoprotein produced also by the enterocytes. So, uh, the M cells are providing uh, some kind of immunosurveillance that helps the immune cells to monitor which antigens are present on the mucosa.